Hi everyone. I hope you are ready for a long chapter today because we are going to do chapter number seven and it's going to be fun and I am ready. I hope you are ready too. Let's, where is this? There it is. <laughs> Let's turn to the page and get started because it's so long. But reading's fun, so I'm going to enjoy this. Here we go. The shovel, shovel felt heavy in Stanley's soft, fleshy hands. He tried to jam it into the earth but the i don't know what that was <laughs> let's keep going he tried to jam it into the earth but the blade banged against the ground and bounced bounced off without making a dent. The vibrations, the vibrations ran up the shaft of the shovel and into Stanley's wrists, wrists, making his bones rattle, dull, 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 rattle. It was still dark. The only light came from the moon and the stars, more stars than Stanley had ever seen before. It seemed like he had only just gotten up, gotten to sleep when Mr. Pendansky, Pendansky came in and woke everyone up. Using all his might, he brought, brought the shovel back down onto the dry lake bed. The force stung his hands, but made no impression, impression on the earth. It's noisy outside tonight. He wondered, wondered, wondered if he had a defective, defective, defective shovel. He glanced at zero, about 15 feet away, who scooped out a shovel full of dirt and dumped, dumped it on a pile that was already almost a foot tall. For breakfast, breakfast, they'd been served some kind of lukewarm, it's like not hot, not cold, cereal. Okay, let's read it. The shovel felt heavy in Stanley's soft, fleshy hands. He tried to jam it into the earth, but the blade banged against the ground and bounced off without making a dent. The vibrations ran up the shaft of the shovel and into Stanley's wrists, making his bones rattle. It was still dark. The only light came from the moon and the stars more stars than Stanley had ever seen before. It seemed he'd only just gotten to sleep when Mr. Pendansky came in and woke everyone up. Using all his might, he brought the shovel back down onto the dry lake bed. The force stung his hands, but made no impression on the earth. He wondered if he'd had a defective shovel. He glanced at Zero, about 15 feet away, who scooped out a shovel full of dirt and dumped it on a pile that was already almost a foot tall. For breakfast, they'd serve some kind of lukewarm cereal. Mm. Good. 
the best part was the orange juice. Orange juice. They each got a pint carton. The cereal actually didn't taste too bad, but it had smelled just like his cot. Ugh, that's gross. They, oh, then they filled their canteens, canteens, their water bottles, got their shovels and were marched, marched. Listen for the t on different sounds of ed, okay? You'll see the pattern. Were marched out across the lake. Each group was assigned, assigned a different area. The shovels were kept in a shed near the showers. Ooh, there's a lot of S's. The shovels were kept in a shed near the showers. <laughs> they all looked the same to Stanley, although X-Ray had his own special shovel, which no one else was allowed to use. X-Ray claimed it was shorter ooh, than the others, but if it was, it was only by a fraction, fraction of an inch. So just a tiny amount. The shovels were five feet long from the tip of the steel blade to the end of the wooden shaft. Stanley's hole would have to be as deep as his shovel. Hmm. It's pretty deep. And he'd have to be able to lay the shovel flat across the bottom in any direction, direction. That was why X-Ray wanted the shortest shovel. Smart, that's smart. He has to dig less. The lake was so full of holes and mounds that it reminded Stanley of pictures he'd seen of the moon. If you find anything interesting or unusual, 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 don't forget that, unusual, oh, oh, unusual, hmm, lost it. Mr. Pendansky had told him, you should report it either to me or Mr. Sir, when we come around with the water truck. If the warden likes what you found, you'll get, you'll get the rest of the day off. What are we supposed, supposed to be, supposed to be, supposed to be, Ooh, put them together, supposed to be a phrase supposed to be supposed to be looking for <laughs> Stanley asked him you're not looking for anything you're digging to build character it just oh it's just if you find anything the warden would like to know about it he glanced helplessly, helplessly, helplessly at his shovel. It wasn't defective. He was defective. All right. I like that. We'll read the whole page and then again. The best part was the orange juice. They each got a pint carton. The cereal actually didn't taste too bad, but it <laughs> but it had smelled just like his cot. Then they filled their canteens, got their shovels, and were marched out across the lake. Each group was assigned a different area. 
The shovels were kept in a shed near the shower. They all looked the same to Stanley, although X-Ray had his own special shovel, which no one else was allowed to use. X-Ray claimed it was shorter than the others, but if it was, it was only by a fraction of an inch. The shovels were five feet long from tip of the steel blade to the end of the wooden shaft. Stanley's hole would have to be as deep as his shovel, and he'd have to be able to lay the shovel flat across the bottom in any direction. That was why X-Ray wanted the shortest shovel. The lake was so full of holes and mounds that it reminded Stanley of pictures he'd seen of the moon. If you find anything interesting or unusual, Mr. Pendansky had told him, you should report it either to me or Mr. Sir when we come around with the water truck. If the warden likes what you found, you'll get the rest of the day off. What are we supposed to be looking for? Stanley asked. You're not looking for anything. You're digging to build character. It's just if you find anything, the warden would like to know about it. He glanced helplessly at his shovel. It wasn't defective. He was defective. Ooh. He noticed. No de de. Ooh. That's not what it says, teacher. No de de. No dist. Ooh, confusing. Some words are like this. Don't feel bad. You will learn them. You will memorize them. There's very few. No dist. Okay? Noticed a thin crack in the ground. He placed the point of his shovel on top of it, then jumped back. Oh, then jumped on the back of the blade with both feet. Come on, we can do this. <laughs> the shovel sank a few inches into the packed, kt, packed, kt, packed earth. <laughs> he smiled. For once in his life, it paid to be overweight. Huh. <laughs> He leaned on the shaft uh, and pried, pried up his first shovel full of dirt, then dumped, dumped <laughs> it off to the side. They all sound like songs, like do doo <laughs> Only 10 million more to go, he thought, then placed the shovel back in the crack and jumped on it again. He unearthed, he unearthed several shovelfuls of dirt in this manner before it occurred to him that he was dumping his dirt within the perimeter, perimeter, perimeter of his hole, he laid his shovel flat on the ground and marked where the edges of his hole would be. Five feet was awfully, awfully wide. That's big. That noise was the coronavirus spray truck. <laughs> it sprays disinfectant all over the road and the trees. It's a huge truck that drives down the road. And I'm on the fourth floor, so it's really loud. <sighs> he moved the dirt he'd already dug up out past his mark. He took a drink from his canteen. Five feet would be awfully deep, too. Hmm, I agree. The digging got easier after a while. A while. Put them together. A while. The ground was hardest 
at the surface where the sun had baked a crust about eight inches deep. Beneath that, the earth was looser. But by the time Stanley broke past the crust, a blister, ah, a blister had formed in the middle of his right thumb. Well, this is my left. And it hurt to hold the shovel. Stanley's great great grandfather was named Elia Yelnats. He was born in Latvia, Latvia. When he was 15 years old, he fell in love with Myra Menke. Don't worry about the names. He didn't know he was Stanley's great great grandfather. Myra Minky was 14. She would turn 15 in two months. Months. At which time her father had decided she should be married. Let's read it. <sighs> he noticed a thin crack on the ground. He placed the point of his shovel on top of it then jumped on the back of the blade with both feet. The shovel sank a few inches into the packed earth. He smiled. For once in his life, it paid to be overweight. He leaned on the shaft and pried up his first shovel full of dirt, then dumped it off to the side. Only 10 million more to go, he thought, then placed the shovel back in the crack and jumped on it again. He unearthed several shovelfuls of dirt in this manner before it occurred to him that he was dumping his dirt within the perimeter of the hole. He laid his shovel flat on the ground and marked where the edges of his hole would be. Five feet was awfully wide. He moved the dirt he'd already dug up out past his mark. He took a drink from his canteen. Five feet would be awfully deep too. The digging got easier after a while. The ground was hardest at the surface where the sun had baked a crust about eight inches deep. Beneath that, the earth was looser. But by the time Stanley broke past the crust, a blister had formed in the middle of his right thumb and it hurt to hold the shovel. Stanley's great-great-grandfather was named Elia Yelnats. He was born in Latvia. When he was 15 years old, he fell in love with Myra Menke. He didn't know he was Stanley's great-great-grandfather. Myra Menke was 14. She would turn 15 in two months, at which time her father had decided she should be married. 15. Oh, so early. Here we go. Eliah went to her father to ask for her hand. But so did Igor Barkov, the pig farmer. Igor was 57, 57 years old. He had a red nose and fat, puffy cheeks. Ew, she's 15. He's, ew. I will trade you my fattest pig for your daughter. What? Igor offered, and what have you got, Myra? <laughs> and what have you got? Myra's father asked Elia. <laughs> A heart full of love, said Myra's father. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> this is silly. A heart full of love, said Elia. I'd rather have a fat pig, said Myra's father. Desperate, 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 Elia went to see Madame Zeroni, an old Egyptian, Egyptian woman who lived on the edge of town. He had become friends with her, though 
she was quite, quite a bit older than him. She was even older than Igor Barkov, the other boys of his village, village, liked to mud wrestle, wrestle, see my mouth, wrestle, wrestle. Elia preferred, preferred visiting Madame Zeroni and listening, listen, sin, sinning, listening to her many stories. Madame Zeroni had dark skin and a very wide mouth. When she looked at you, her eyes seemed to expand, expand, and you felt like she was looking right through you. <laughs> Elia, what's wrong? She asked before he'd even told her he was upset. She was sitting in a homemade, home made, homemade. You see that? H O M E M, M E M. Put those together. Home aid, aid. Homemade. Just kind of blend. Homemade wheelchair wheelchair. She had no left foot. Her leg stopped at her ankle. Ankle. I'm in love with Myra Menke. Oh, Elia confessed, confessed, confessed. But Igor Barkov has offered to trade his fattest pig for her. I can't compete with that. <laughs> Good, said Madame Zeroni. You're too young to get married. You've got your whole life ahead of you. But I love Myra. Myra's head is as empty as a flower pot. That means she's stupid. <laughs> but she's beautiful. Ugh. So is a flower pot. Can she push a plow? Can she milk a goat? Let's read it. Hopefully there's no more sounds. <laughs> Elia went to her father to ask for her hand, but so did Igor Barkov, the pig farmer. Igor was 57 years old. He had a red nose and fat, puffy cheeks. I will trade you my fattest pig for your daughter, Igor offered. And what have you got, Myra's father asked, Elia. A heart full of love, said Elia. I'd rather have a fat, <laughs> so silly. I'd rather have a fat pig, said Myra's father. Desperate, Elia went to see Madame Zeroni, an old Egyptian woman who lived on the edge of town. He had become friends with her, though she was quite a bit older than him. She was even older than Igor Barkov. The other boys of his village liked to mud wrestle. Elia preferred visiting Madame Zeroni and listening to her many stories. Madame Zeroni had dark skin and a very wide mouth. When she looked at you, her eyes seemed to expand and you felt like she was looking right through you. Elia, what's wrong? She asked before he'd even told her he was upset. She was sitting in a homemade wheelchair. She had no left foot. Her leg stopped at her ankle. I'm in love with Myra Menke. Elia confessed, but Igor Barkov offered to trade his fattest pig for her. I can't compete with that. Good, said Madame Zeroni. You're too young to get married. You've got your whole life ahead of you. But I love Myra. Myra's head is as empty as a flower pot. 
but she's beautiful. So's a flower pot. Can she push a plow? Can she milk a goat? <laughs> I like Madame Zeroni. No, she is too delicate. Four sounds. Delicate, delicate. Can she have an intelligent, intelligent conversation? Conversation? No. She is silly and foolish. Will she take care of you when you are sick? No. She is spoiled. Spoiled. That means she gets everything she wants. And will only want to take, want you to take care of her. So she is beautiful. So what? Ptooey. <laughs> it's like spitting sound. Ptooey. <laughs> Madame Zeroni spat. Oh, spat. <laughs> On the dirt. She told Elia that he should go to America. Like my son, that's where your future lies, not with Myra Menke. But Elia would hear none of that. He was 15, and all he could see was Myra's shallow beauty. Madame Zeroni hated to see Elia so forlorn. Forlorn like sad. Oh, look at him. Hmm. Against her better judgment. Judgment. I guess. Judge. Judgment. Yeah. Judgment. She agreed to help him. It just so happens my sow, that's a girl pig that's pregnant, gave birth to a litter of piglets yesterday. Yesterday. She said, there is one little runt whom she won't suckle. The pig won't give food to. You may have him. He would die anyway. Madame Zeroni led Elia around the back of her house where she kept her pigs. Elia took the tiny piglet, but he didn't see what good it would do him. It wasn't much bigger than a rat. It's a tiny pig. He'll grow, Madame Zeroni assured assured him. Don't you see that mountain on the edge of the forest? Do you see that mountain? Yes, said Elia. On top of the mountain, there is a stream where the water runs uphill. Hmm. You must carry the piglet every day to the top of the mountain and let it drink from the stream. As it drinks, you are to sing to him. Weird. <laughs> she taught, taught Elia a special song to sing to the pig. On the day of Myra's 15th birthday, you should carry the pig up the mountain for the last time. Then take it directly to Myra's father. It will be fatter than any of Igor's pigs. Ooh. Let's read. No, she is too delicate. Can she have an intelligent conversation? No, she is silly and foolish. Will she take care of you when you are sick? No, she is spoiled and will only want you to take care of her. So she is beautiful. So what? Ptooey. Madame Zeroni spat on the dirt. She told Elia that he should go to America. 
like my son. That's where your future lies, not with my Romanki. But Elijah would hear none of that. He was 15, and all he could see was Myra's shallow beauty. Madame Zeroni hated to see Elijah so forlorn. Against her better judgment, she agreed to help him. It just so happens my sow gave birth to a litter of piglets yesterday, she said. There is one little runt whom won't she won't suckle. You may have him. He would die anyway. Madame Zeroni led Elia around the back of her house, where she kept her pigs. Elia took the tiny piglet, but he didn't see what good it would do him. It wasn't much bigger than a rat. He'll grow, Madame Zeroni assured him. Do you see that mountain on the edge of the forest? Yes, said Elia. On top of the mountain there's a stream where the water runs uphill. You must carry the piglet every day to the top of the mountain and let it drink from the stream. As it drinks, you are to sing to him. She taught Elia a special song to sing to the pig. On the day of Myra's 15th birthday, you should carry the pig up the mountain for the last time, then take it directly to Myra's father. It will be fatter than any of Igor's pigs. Wow, it sounds like magic, right? Hmm. If it is that big and fat, asked Elia, how will I be able to carry it up the mountain? The piglet is not too heavy for you now, is it? asked Madame Zeroni. Of course not, said Elia. Do you think it will be too heavy for you tomorrow? No. Every day you will carry the pig up the mountain. It will get a little bigger, but you will get a little stronger. After you give the pig to Myra's father, I want you to do one more thing for me. Anything, said Elia. I want you to carry me up the mountain. I want to drink from the stream, and I want you to sing the song to me. Elia promised, promised he would. Madame Zeroni warned, warned that if he failed, failed to do this, he and his descendants, descendants, descendants would be doomed for all of eternity eternity. At the time, Elia thought nothing of the curse. He was just a 15-year-old kid, and eternity didn't seem much longer than a week from Tuesday. Besides, Besides, z z z besides, he liked Madame Zeroni and would be glad to carry her up the mountain. He would have done it right then and there, but he wasn't yet strong enough. Stanley was still digging. His hole was about three feet deep but only in the center center it sloped sloped upward to the edges the sun had only just come up over the horizon horizon but he already could feel its hot rays against his face Bah. It is, oh, if it is that big and fat, asked Elia, how will I be able to carry it up the mountain? The piglet is not too heavy for you now, is it? Asked Madame Zeroni. Of course not, said Elia. 
Do you think it will be too heavy for you tomorrow? No. Every day you will carry the pig up the mountain. It will grip. <laughs> it will get a little bigger, but you will get a little stronger. After you give the pig to Myra's father, I want you to do one more thing for me. Anything," said Elia. "I want you to carry me up the mountain. I want to drink from the stream, and I want you to sing the song for me, to me." Elia promised he would. Madame Zeroni warned that if he failed to do this. He and his descendants would be doomed for all of eternity. At the time, Elia thought nothing of the curse. He was just fifteen-year-old kid, and eternity didn't seem much longer than a week from Tuesday. Besides, he liked Madame Zeroni, and he would be glad to carry her up the mountain. He would have done it right then and there, but he wasn't yet strong enough. Stanley was still digging. His hole was about three feet deep, but only in the center. It sloped upwards to the edge. The sun had only just come up over the horizon, but he already could feel its hot rays against his face. Ah, sounds terrible, right? <laughs> we are doing great, but we have so many more. <laughs> wow! As he reached down to pick up his canteen. He felt a sudden rush of dizziness, dizziness, and put his hands on his knees to steady himself. For a moment, he was afraid he would throw up. Ugh! But the moment passed. He drank. The last drop of water from his canteen. Uh oh, he had blisters on every one of his fingers, and one in the center of each palm, right there. Excuse me. Oh, this chair is hard. Everyone else's hole was a lot deeper than his. He couldn't actually see their holes, but he could tell by the size of the dirt piles. He saw a cloud of dust moving across the waste land, and noticed that the other boys had stopped digging and were watching it too. The dirt cloud moved closer, and he could see that it trailed behind a red pickup truck. The truck stopped near where they were digging, and the boys lined up behind it, X-ray in front, zero at the rear. Stanley got in line. Behind zero, Mister Sir filled each of their canteens from a tank of water in the bed of the pickup. As he took Stanley's canteen from him, he said, "This isn't the Girl Scouts, is it?" Hmm. Stanley raised and lowered all one. Shoulder, shoulder. Mister Sir followed Stanley back to his hole to see how he was doing. You better get with it, he said, or else you're going to be digging in the hottest part of the day. He popped some sunflower seeds. Z, z, Seeds in his, <laughs> into his mouth, deftly, 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 removed the shells with his teeth and spat them into Stanley's hole. Ew. 
Every day, Elijah carried the little piglet up the mountain and sang to it as it drank from the stream. As the piglet grew fatter, Elijah grew stronger. Ooh. As he reached down to pick up his canteen, he felt a sudden rush of dizziness and put his hands to his knees to steady himself. For a moment, he was afraid he would throw up, but the moment passed. He drank the last drop of water from his canteen. He had blisters on every one of his fingers and one in the center of each palm. Everyone else's hole was a lot deeper than his. He couldn't actually see their holes, but he could tell by the size of their dirt piles. He saw a cloud of dust moving across the wasteland and noticed that the other boys had stopped digging and were watching it too. The dirt cloud moved closer and he could see that it trailed behind a red pickup truck. The truck stopped near where they were digging and the boys lined up behind it. X-ray in front, Zero at the rear. Stanley got in line behind Zero. Mr. Sir filled each of their canteens from a tank of water in the bed of the pickup. As it, as he took Stanley's canteen from him, he said, This ain't the Girl Scouts, is it? Stanley raised and lowered one shoulder. Mr. Sir followed Stanley back to his hole to see how he was doing. You better get with it, he said, or else you're going to be digging in the hottest part of the day. He popped some sunflower seeds in his mouth, deftly removed the shells with his teeth and spat them into Stanley's hole. Every day, Eliah carried the little piglet up the mountain and sang to it as it drank from the stream. As the pig grew fatter, Eliah grew stronger. Ooh, yeah, this is getting interesting. We're getting faster too, have you noticed? We're not practicing the sentences and the words as slow as we were for chapter one. Why? Because you're getting better. Let's keep going. On the day of Myra's 15th, 15th birthday, Elias' pig weighed over 50, d, 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 50 stones. Madame Zeroni had told him to carry the pig up the mountain on that day as well, but Elia didn't want to present Zent himself to Myra, Myra smelling like a pig. Instead, he took a bath. Uh-oh. It was his second bath in less than a week. Ew. 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 One bath. Two baths in one week? Ugh. Then he led the pig to Myra's. Igor Barkov was there with his pig as well. These, uh, these are two of the finest pigs I've ever seen, Myra's father declared. He was also impressed, impressed with Elia, who s seemed to have grown bigger and stronger in the last two months. I used to think you were a good-for-nothing book reader, he said, but I see now you could be an excellent, excellent, excellent mud wrestler. <laughs> May I marry your daughter, daughter. Elia boldly asked, asked. First, I must weigh the pigs. Alas, poor Elia should have carried his pig up the mountain one last time. The two pigs weighed exactly the same. <gasps> wow. Stanley's blisters 
had ripped ugh, open and new blisters formed. Ow. He kept changing his grip on the shovel to try to avoid, avoid the pain. Finally, he removed his cap and held it between the shaft of his shovel and his raw hands. This helped, but digging was harder because the cap would slip and slide. The sun beat down on his unprotected, unprotected, unprotected head and neck. Though he tried to convince, convince himself otherwise, he'd been aware for a while that his piles of dirt were too close to his hole. The piles were outside of his five foot circle, but he could see he was going to run out of room. Still, he pretended otherwise and kept adding more dirt to the piles, piles that he would eventually, 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 eventually have to move. Stupid. On Myra's 15th birthday, Elias Pig weighed over 50 stones. Madame Zeroni had told him to carry the pig up the mountain on that day as well. But Eliah didn't want to present himself to Myra, smelling like a pig. Instead, he took a bath. It was his second bath in less than a week. Then he led the pig to Myra's. Igor Barkov was there with his pig as well. These are two of the finest pigs I've ever seen, Myra's father declared. He was also impressed with Eliah, who seemed to have grown bigger and stronger in the last two months. I used to think you were a good-for-nothing book reader, he said, but I see now you could be an excellent mud wrestler. May I marry your daughter? Eliah boldly asked. First, I must weigh the pigs. Alas, poor Eliah should have carried his pig up the mountain one last time. The two pigs, hmm, the two pigs weighed exactly the same. Stanley's blisters had ripped open and new blisters had formed. He kept changing his grip on the shovel to try to avoid the pain. Finally, he removed his cap and held it between the shaft of his shovel and his raw hands. This helped, but digging was harder because the cap would slip and slide. The sun beat down on his unprotected head and neck. Though he tried to convince himself otherwise, he'd been aware for a while that his piles of dirt were too close to his hole. The piles were outside his five-foot circle, but he could see he was going to run out of room. Still, he pretended otherwise and kept adding more dirt to the piles, piles that he would eventually have to move. Oh, no, right? My back hurts. <laughs> this chair is made of wood. Mm. The problem was that, was that when the dirt was in the ground, it was compacted, compacted. It expanded when it was excavated, excavated. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> the piles were a lot bigger than his hole was deep. It was either now or later. Reluctantly. 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 Yeah, just like that. Reluctantly. Five sounds. He climbed up out of his hole 
and once again dug his shovel into his previously 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 dug dirt myra's father keep moving <laughs> myra's father got down on his hands and knees and closely examined each pig tail to snout those are two of the finest pigs i have ever seen he said at last how am i to decide i only i have only one daughter why not let myra decide suggested suggested elia that's preposterous preposterous that's preposterous exclaimed igor expelling saliva as he spoke Ew. myra is just an empty-headed girl said her father how can she possibly decide when i her father can't myra's oh she knows how she feels in her heart said elia myra's father rubbed his chin then he laughed laughed and said why not he snapped oh he slapped <laughs> elia on the back it doesn't matter to me a pig is a pig he summoned summoned his daughter elia blushed when myra entered the room good afternoon moira he said she looked at him you're elia right she asked myra said her father elia and igor have each offered a pig for your hand in marriage marriage it doesn't matter to me a pig is a pig so i will let you make the choice whom do you wish to marry the problem was that when the dirt was in the ground it was compacted it expanded when it was excavated the piles were a lot bigger than his hole was deep it was either now or later reluctantly he climbed out of his hole he once and once again dug his shovel into the previously dug dirt myra's father got down on his hands and knees and closely examined each pig tail to snout those are two of the finest pigs i have ever seen he said at last how am i to decide i only uh, i have only one daughter why not let myra decide suggested elia that's preposterous exclaimed igor expelling saliva as he spoke myra's just an empty-headed girl said her father how can she possibly decide when i her father can't she knows how she feels in her heart said elia myra's father rubbed his chin then laughed and said why not he slapped elia on the back it doesn't matter to me a pig is a pig he summoned his daughter elia blushed when myra entered the room good afternoon myra he said she looked at him you're elia right she asked myra said her father elia and igor have each offered a pig for your hand in marriage it doesn't matter to me a pig is a pig so i will let you make the choice whom do you wish to marry <gasps> who do you think myra looked confused confused you want me to decide that's right my blossom blossom which means flower said her father gee i don't know said myra which pig weighs more <laughs> they're both they both weigh the same said her father golly <laughs> she's really stupid golly said myra i guess i choose elia no igor 
No. Elia? No. Igor? Oh, I know. I'll think of a number between one and ten. I'll marry whoever guesses the closest number. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> she is stupid. <laughs> ten, guessed Igor. Elia said nothing. Elia, said Myra, what number do you guess? Elia didn't pick a number. Marry Igor, he muttered. You can keep my pig as a wedding present. Smart. As a wedding present. The next time the water truck came, it was driven by Mr. Pendansky, who also brought sack lunches. Stanley sat with his back against a pile of dirt and ate. He had a bologna, bologna sandwich, potato chips, potato chips, potato, and a large chocolate chip cookie. Wow, that's pretty nice. How you doing? asked Magnet. Not real good, said Stanley. Well, the first hole's the hardest, Magnet said. Stanley took a long, deep breath. <sighs> he couldn't afford to dawdle, dawdle. He was way behind the others, and the sun just kept getting hotter. It wasn't even noon yet. Noon yet, noon yet. Put them together. But he didn't know if he had the strength, strength to stand up. Weird, right? Strength, guth, guth. <laughs> no. Strength, strength, guth. When you put it, it sounds kind of like a K. Strength to stand up. He thought about quitting, quitting. He wondered, wondered what they would do to him. What could they do to him? His clothes, 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 z, 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 z. see that? Z, like the, 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 z, 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 like z. Clothes were soaked with sweat. In school, he had learned that sweating was good for you. It was nature, sure, nature's way of keeping you cool. So why was he so hot? Here we go. <laughs> Myra looked confused. You want me to decide? That's right, my blossom, said her father. Gee, I don't know, said Myra. Which pig weighs more? They both weigh the same, said her father. Golly, said Myra. I guess I'll choose Elia. No, Igor? No, Elia. No, Igor. Oh, I know. I'll think of a number between one and ten. I'll marry whoever guesses the closest number. Okay, I'm ready. Ten, guessed Igor. Elia said nothing. Elia, said Myra, what number do you guess? Elia didn't pick a number. Marry Igor, he muttered. You can keep my pig as a wedding present. <laughs> Smart. Next time the water truck came, it was driven by Mr. Pendansky, who also brought sack lunches. Stanley sat with his back against a pile of dirt and ate. He had a bologna sandwich, potato chips, and a large chocolate chip cookie. How you doing? asked Magnet. Not real good, said Stanley. Well, the first hole's the hardest, Magnet said. Stanley took a long, deep breath. He couldn't afford to dawdle. He was way behind the others, and the sun just kept getting hotter. It wasn't even noon yet. But he didn't know if he could have. But he didn't know if he had the strength to stand up. He thought about quitting. 
He wondered what they would do to him. What could they do to him? His clothes were soaked with sweat. In school, he had learned that sweating was good for you. It was nature's way of keeping you cool. So why was he so hot? Getting there. Using his shovel for support. Support. He managed to get to his feet. Where are we supposed to go to the bathroom? He asked Magnet. Magnet gestured, gestured with his arms to the great expanse around them. Pick a hole, any hole, he said. Stanley staggered across the lake, almost falling over a dirt pile. Behind him, he said, he heard Magnet say, but first, make sure nothing's living in it. Nothing's living in it. Whew. After, <laughs> this is a long chapter. After leaving Myra's house, Elia wandered aimlessly, aimlessly through the town until he found himself down by the wharf, wharf, <laughs> funny word. He sat on the edge of a pier, pier, and stared down into the cold black water. He could not understand how Myra had trouble deciding between him and Igor. I don't know what that was. <laughs> he thought she loved him. Even if she didn't love him, couldn't she see what a foul person ugh, Igor was? It was like Madame Zeroni had said. Her head was as empty as a flower pot. Some men were gathering, gathering on another dock, and he went to see what was going on. A sign read, Deck Hands Wanted, Free Passage, Passage to America. Ooh. He had no sailing expir, ex, experience, experience experience, but the ship's captain signed him aboard. The captain could see that Elia was a man of great strength, but not everybody could carry a full grown pig up a mountainside, up the side of a mountain. <gasps> It wasn't until the ship had cleared the harbor and headed out across the Atlantic. Al Atlantic. 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 Meh. Atlantic. That he suddenly, suddenly remembered, remembered his promise to carry Madame Zeroni up the mountain. He felt terrible. He wasn't afraid of the curse. He thought that was a lot of nonsense. He felt bad because he knew Madame Zeroni had wanted to drink from the stream before she died. Huh? Okay, blah, <laughs> this is a fun chapter. Using his shovel for support, he managed to get to his feet. Where are we supposed to go to the bathroom? He asked Magnet. Magnet, guessed, bleh, Magnet gestured with his arms to the great expanse around them. Pick a hole, any hole, he said. Stanley staggered across the lake, almost falling over a dirt pile. Behind him, he heard Magnus say, but first make sure nothing's living in it. 
After leaving Myra's house, Eliah wandered aimlessly through the town until he found himself down by the wharf. He sat on the edge of a pier and stared down into the cold black water. He could not understand how Myra had trouble deciding between him and Igor. He thought she loved him. Even if she didn't love him, couldn't she see what a foul person Igor was? It was like Madame Cerrone had said, her head is as empty as a flower pot. Some men were gathering on another dock, and he went to see what was going on. A sign read, Deckhands Wanted, Free Passage to America. He had no sailing experience, but the ship's captain signed him aboard. The captain could see that Eliah was a man of great strength. Not everybody could carry a fully grown pig up the side of a mountain. It wasn't until the ship had cleared the harbor and was heading out across the Atlantic that he suddenly remembered his promise to carry Madame Zeroni up the mountain. He felt terrible. He wasn't afraid of the curse. He thought that was a lot of nonsense, but he felt bad because he knew Madame Zeroni had wanted to drink from the stream before she died. He's a good guy. He's a He's a good guy, but he's foolish. Hmm. Zero was the smallest kid in group D. We're doing good. But he was the first one to finish digging. You're finished? Stanley asked enviously. Envious. Enviously. Zero said nothing. Stanley walked to Zero's hole and watched him measure it with his shovel. The top of his hole was a perfect circle and the sides were smooth and steep. Not one dirt clod more than necessary, necessary, necessary had been removed from the earth. Zero pulled himself up to the surface. He didn't even smile. He looked down at his perfectly, <clears throat> perfectly dug hole, spat in it, and then turned and headed back to the camp compound. Zero's one weird dude, said Zigzag. <laughs> Stanley would have laughed, but he didn't have the strength. Zigzag had to be the weirdest dude Stanley had ever seen. He had a long skinny neck and a big round head with wild frizzy blonde hair that stuck out in all directions directions his head seemed to bob up and down on his neck like it was on a spring like a bobblehead toy armpit was the second one to finish digging he also spat into his hole before heading back to the camp compound one by one, Stanley watched each of the boys spit into his hole and return to the camp compound. Stanley kept digging. His hole was almost up to his shoulders, although it was hard to tell exactly where ground level was because his dirt piles completely surrounded the hole. The deeper he got, the harder it was to raise the dirt up and out of the hole. Once again, he realized he was going to have to move the piles. Kind of stupid too. His cap was stained with blood from his hands. He felt like he was digging his own grave. Let's read this again. <clears throat> I 
I should have brought a drink over, but eh, it's so far away. <laughs> Zero was the smallest kid in Group D, but he was the first one to finish digging. You're finished? Stanley asked enviously. Zero said nothing. Stanley walked to Zero's hole and watched him measure it with his shovel. The top of his hole was a perfect circle, and the sides were as smooth and steep. Not one dirt clod more than necessary had been removed from the earth. Zero pulled himself up to the surface. He didn't even smile. He looked down at his perfectly dug hole, spat in it, then turned and headed back to Camp Compound. Zero's one weird dude, said Zigzag. Stanley would have laughed, but he didn't have the strength. Zigzag had to be the weirdest dude Stanley had ever seen. He had a long skinny neck and a big round head with wild, frizzy blonde hair that stuck out in all directions. His head seemed to bob up and down on his neck like it was on a spring. Armpit was the second one to finish digging. He also spat in his hole before heading back to the camp compound. One by one, Stanley watched each of the boys spit into his hole and return to Camp Compound. Stanley kept digging. His hole was almost up to his shoulders, although it was hard to tell exactly where ground level was because his dirt piles completely surrounded the hole. The deeper he got, the harder it was to raise the dirt up and out of the hole. Once again, he realized he was going to have to move the piles. His cap was stained with blood from his hands. He felt like he was digging his own grave. Wow, we have one and a half more pages. You're doing great. We can do this. In America, Eliah learned to speak English. <laughs> he fell in love with a woman named Sarah Miller. She could push a plow, milk a goat, and most important, think for herself. Bingo. She and Eliah often stayed up half the night talking and laughing together. Their life was not easy. Eliah worked hard, but bad luck seemed to follow him everywhere. He always seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hmm. He remembered Madame Zeroni telling him that she had a son in America. Eliah was forever looking for him. He'd walk up to complete strangers and ask if they knew someone named Zeroni or had ever heard of anyone named Zeroni. No one did. Eliah wasn't sure what he'd do if he ever found Madame Zeroni's son anyway. Carry him up the mountain and sing the pig lullaby to him? After his barn was struck by lightning, lightning, for the third time, <laughs> Wow. He told Sarah about his broken promise to Madame Zeroni. I'm worse than a pig thief, he said. You should leave me and find someone who isn't cursed. I'm not leaving you, said Sarah, but I want you to do one thing for me. Hmm. In America, Eliah learned to speak English. He fell in love with a woman named Sarah Miller. She could push a plow, milk a goat, and, most important, think for herself. She and Eliah often stayed up half the night talking and laughing together. Their life was not easy. Eliah worked hard, but bad luck seemed to follow him everywhere. He always seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He remembered Madame Zeroni telling him that she had a son in America. Eliah was forever looking for him. He'd walk up to complete strangers and ask if they knew someone named Zeroni, or had they ever heard or had ever heard of anyone named Zeroni. No one did. Eliah wasn't sure what he'd do if he ever found Madame Zeroni's son, anyway. Carry him up the mountain and sing a ping lullaby to him? 
After his barn was struck by lightning for the third time, he told Sarah about his broken promise to Madame Zeroni. I'm worse than a pig thief, he said. You should leave me and find someone who isn't cursed. I'm not leaving you, said Sarah, but I want you to do one thing for me. What is it? Anything, said Eliah. Sarah smiled. Sing me the pig lullaby. Hmm. He sang it for her. Her eyes sparkled. Sparkled. That's so pretty. What does it mean? Eliah tried his best to translate, translate it from Latvian, Latvian to English, but it wasn't the same. It rhyme, rhymes, rhymes in Latvian, he told her. I could tell, said Sarah. A year later, their child was born. Sarah named him Stanley because she noticed that Stanley was Yelnats spelled backwards. Sarah changed the words of the pig lullaby so that they rhymed, and every night she sang it to little Stanley. If only, if only the woodpecker sighs, the bark on the tree was as soft as the skies. While the wolf waits below, hungry and lonely, crying the moon, if only, if only. <laughs> Stanley's hole was as deep as his shovel, but not quite as wide enough in the bottom, on the bottom. He grimaced, he grimaced as he sliced off a chunk of the dirt, then raised it up and flung it onto a pile. He laid his shovel back down on the bottom of his hole and, to his surprise, it fit. He rotated it and only had to chip a few chunks of dirt here and there before it could lie flat across the hole in every direction. He heard the water truck approach. Ching approaching and felt a strange sense of pride at being able to show Mr. Sir or Mr. Pendansky he had dug his first hole. <laughs> Anything, said Eliah. Sarah smiled. Sing me the pig lullaby. He sang it for her. Her eyes sparkled. That's so pretty. What does it mean? Eliah tried his best to translate it from Latvian into English, but it wasn't the same. It rhymes in Latvian, he told her. I could tell, said Sarah. A year later, their child was born. Sarah named him Stanley because she noticed that Stanley was Yelnats spelled backwards. Sarah changed the words of the pig lullaby so that they rhymed, and every night she sang it to little Stanley. If only, if only, the woodpecker sighs, the bark on the trees was as soft as the skies. While the wolf waits below, hungry and lonely, crying to the moon, if only, if only. Stanley's hole was as deep as his shovel, but not quite wide enough in the, on the bottom. Should be in the bottom. Huh. He grimaced as he sliced off a chunk of dirt, then raised it up and flung it onto the pile. He laid his shovel back down on the bottom of his hole, and to his surprise it fit. Here and there, before it could lie flat across his hole, oh, <laughs> to his surprise it fit. He rotated it and only had to chip off a few chunks of dirt here and there before it could lie flat across his hole in every direction. He heard the water truck approaching and felt a strange sense of pride at being able to show Mr. Sir or Mr. Pendansky he had dug his first hole. Oh, we're on the last page! Yeah! I'm thirsty. He put his hands on the rim and tried to pull himself up. He couldn't do it. His arms were too weak to lift his heavy body. He used his legs to help, but he just didn't have any strength. 
He was trapped in his hole. It was almost funny, but it wasn't. He wasn't in the mood to laugh. Stanley, he heard Mr. Pendansky call. Using his shovel, he dug two foot holes in the hole wall. Yeah, in the hole wall. <laughs> he climbed out to see Mr. Pendansky walking over to him. I was afraid you'd fainted, Mr. Pendansky said. You wouldn't have been the first. I'm finished, Stanley said, putting his bloody, blood-spotted cap back on his head. All right, said Mr. Pendansky, raising his hand for a high five, but Stanley ignored it. He didn't have the strength. Mr. Pendansky lowered his hand and looked down at Stanley's hole. Well done, he said. You want to ride back? Stanley shook his head. I'll walk. Mr. Pendansky climbed into the truck without filling Stanley's canteen. Stanley waited for him to drive away and then took another look at his hole. He knew it was nothing to be proud of, but he felt proud nonetheless, nonetheless. He sucked up his last bit of saliva and spat. <laughs> he put his hands on the rim and tried to pull himself up. He couldn't do it. His arms were too weak to lift his heavy body. He used his legs to help, but he just didn't have any strength. He was trapped in his hole. It was almost funny, but it wasn't in the mood to laugh. Stanley, he heard Mr. Pendansky call. Using his shovel, he dug two footholds in the whole wall. He climbed out to see Mr. Pendansky walking over to him. I was afraid you'd fainted, Mr. Pendansky said. You wouldn't be the first. I'm finished, said Stanley, putting his blood-spotted cap back on his head. All right, said Mr. Pendansky, raising his hand for a high five. But Stanley ignored it. He didn't have the strength. Mr. Pendansky lowered his hand and looked down at Stanley's hole. Well done, he said. You want to ride back? Stanley shook his head. I'll walk. Mr. Pendansky climbed back into the truck without filling Stanley's canteen. Stanley waited for him to drive away. Then he took another look in his hole, at his hole. He knew it was nothing to be proud of, but he felt proud nonetheless. He sucked up his last bit of saliva and spit. And you should be proud because you read a really long chapter. <sighs> Get some water and I will see you for chapter 8. Goodbye.